If you run away from the hard place that you're facing right now, and it's so easy when you're uncomfortable to blame, 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 blame. It's everybody else but me. They don't understand. Well, God understands. All right, I'm gonna share with you this morning about the test of faithfulness. And um, I'm doing a series called Don't Panic, This Is Only a Test. We talked last night about how after we pass our test, we're promoted. After we pass our test, we get promoted. Not if we avoid the tests or ignore the tests or run away from the tests, but after we pass the test. How many of you would say that even right now in your life that you feel like you're in some kind of a testing time? See, well, I'm gonna help you pass that test so you don't have to take it again. See, that's the good news. Like I said last night, in God's economy, you never fail. You never have to worry about failing with God. You just get to keep retaking the same test over and over until you finally pass it. So I want to talk this morning about faithfulness. Actually, I felt like God wanted me to talk to you this morning about faithfulness because God is a faithful God. And He expects us to be faithful. Now, the definition from the biblical definition of faithful is to be trusted, to be reliable, to be sure, and to be worthy of confidence. The Webster's Dictionary says firmly and devotedly supportive, loyal, worthy of trust or belief, reliable, consistent, steady, constant, and steadfast. Now, you don't just trust people because they say you should. I mean, you may not necessarily distrust them, but trust is built over seeing how people respond over a period of time. And I remember something that somebody said to me many, many, many years ago that I still like to repeat. He said, Joyce, just remember this. You never really know anybody till you see them in all different kinds of situations. And I thought that was so good. That's why the Bible says that we need to be tested and tried. Let's look at an example at 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. I'm going to talk for a minute here about leadership and, and who should be in leadership, especially who should be in leadership in the church. Let them also be tried and investigated and proved first. Then if they turn out to be above reproach, let them serve as deacons in the church. Now, it's amazing to me how People today think that they're entitled to something that they don't want to really take the time to earn or deserve. Now, the thing that I found interesting about that scripture and the next one I'm going to show you is, in our estimation, these positions would have been fairly menial. I mean, a deacon was a servant. In the church. I mean, we're not talking about the pastor. We're not talking about the worship leader. We're not even talking about a platform position. This is just a behind the, the scenes guy that's going to serve and take care of things and maybe help take care of some families. But why is that important that they had to be men of tried character and men who'd been tested and men who'd been proven to be reliable? I'll tell you why. When you have the privilege, of representing God on any level to other people. However many people you can help, that's how many you can also hurt if you don't turn out to be the real deal. And let me tell you something. Well, I really could never tell you, but God only knows what it took to get me from where I started to where I am. I mean, it, it was hard to say the least to come out of the mess that I came out of from being abused as many years as I was and letting God change my attitudes and teach me all these different things now that I try to teach you and trust me everything took a whole lot longer than I thought it would and it was a lot harder than I thought it would ever be and went through many things I look back now and I think how in the world did I do that 
how did I do that? But I can tell you right now that I am grateful, thankful for every single thing that I went through. Because in the process, I learned a lot of things that if I didn't know those things, I shouldn't be in this position. And I remember when God told me, Joyce, I want you to always remember this. However many people I let you help, that's exactly how many you can hurt. And actually, to tell you the truth, when I see a young person with very little experience quickly promoted into a key position, it actually really scares me for them. Because if you don't have the character to go with the kind of attention that leadership gets you, then all you're going to do is just create a huge, huge mess. Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Now, Paul and the other apostles had been doing pretty much everything, and they were also distributing the food among the needy and the widows, and people were starting to complain that the job wasn't being done right. Isn't it amazing that even when people are getting free stuff, they always start complaining about how it's being handed out. And Paul didn't, he said it's not right for us to, to stay so busy tending to all this that we can't pay attention to prayer and studying the Word. So he said they were going to find some men that could take care of this thing. And so he says, therefore select out from among yourselves, brethren, seven men of good and attested character. Now, all these guys were going to do was wait on tables. They were going to divide up food and hand it out and make sure it was done right. And yet, just in order to do that as a representative of God, so many people say they want to be in ministry. If I would have asked earlier, how many of you feel you're called to ministry? How many of you want to be in ministry? There would have been hundreds and hundreds of hands up in here. And I can tell you right now, you have zero business being in that position. You don't need to be promoted until you have first passed your tests. And many of you that are going through things right now, they're preparation for your future. They're training for your future. I didn't get to go to Bible college. I already had three kids by the time God called me to teach. And, but I'll tell you one thing, I went to the school of the Holy Ghost and in many ways I think it's a whole lot better than if I could have went somewhere and got some kind of a paper degree. And I'm sure that many of you right now are in the school of the Holy Ghost. Faithful men and women are people who stay under the mighty hand of God. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time He may exalt you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you. Well, that sounds actually real spiritual and we think, oh yes, praise God. Well, I can tell you how that works out in practicality. You're going to be under some human authority that you probably don't think always treats you right and that you probably don't always agree with. And God is going to ask you to serve faithfully in that position with a good attitude, learning how to have a good attitude even when you're told no about something that you would like to do. Come on now, I'm preaching good. <laughs> Keeping a good attitude even when you're told no about something that you would like to do and you just know that you know that you know that they're wrong and you're right. You know what? Could be. Could be. But there's a principle that God is trying to teach you. And that is, is that you will be faithful where you're at. God will promote you in due time. And I can tell you, if you do what God wants you to do, and I'm not just talking about ministry, this is in your business, on your job, in any way. If you will do what God's telling you to do, over and over and over and over, this morning, one of my goals is to teach you the importance of doing it over and over and over 
and over. You didn't get in a mess by doing one thing wrong. You got in a mess by a lifetime of wrongs. And you're not going to get out by doing one thing right. You're going to have to do the right thing over and over and over and let the devil know that you mean business and you are not going to quit doing what's right. If I never get a reward while I'm on this earth, I will not quit what's doing what's right. And if you will be faithful, then there's no devil in hell and no person on earth that can keep you from having what God wants you to have. I'll tell you the truth, all the odds were against me. And I just think it is hilarious what God has done in my life. I mean, it just, it's ridiculous beyond understanding that I should be in this position now and doing what I'm doing. And that while we're sitting here having a good time in Spokane, Washington, they're recording this, and this will be seen all over the world in 40 different languages, and God just set this whole thing up. And you know what? I'm still kind of trying to work on some of the English language. <laughs> it's amazing what God uses. He chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I mean, you, can, you would never understand how impossible it is that I would be doing this without God. And so I know that I know that I know because I went through it. If you will just be faithful and you'll be diligent and you'll just keep doing what you believe God is asking you to do, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Come on, that's something we got to learn today. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. God may be requiring a greater sacrifice out of you than he is anybody that you know. I said, God may be requiring a greater sacrifice out of you than anybody else that you know. And it may not make any sense at all to you. It would be so easy for you to try to reason your way out of it. But if you will just do what you believe God is asking you to do, I'm here to tell you that no person on earth and no devil in hell can keep you from the reward that God has for you. God will promote you when you pass your test. Amen? Let's look at Numbers chapter 12, and we're going to read actually 15 verses because I believe there is a wonderful lesson here about some people who did it wrong. A lot of times we can learn a lot from looking at people who did things wrong. Numbers chapter 12 Now Miriam and Aaron talked against Moses, their brother. That is not faithfulness. They talked against Moses, their brother, because of his Cushite wife. For he had married a Cushite woman. I can tell you right now that Miriam and Aaron couldn't have cared less what color his wife was. The thing they were bothered about was that Moses was the boss. And they were jealous of his position, and they didn't want Moses telling them what to do. Do you know that rebellion is the spirit of Antichrist? And we have such a problem today with people who don't want anybody telling them what to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I had that attitude when I got away from my dad after being manipulated and controlled and abused sexually and mentally in every other way for about 15 years. I was like, nobody's ever going to tell me what to do, and especially not a man. And there, there, was, there had to be a great breaking in my, my life, in my flesh, for me to realize that God intends for us to come under His authority. And a lot of us, we think, well, that's, you know, that's not bad. I mean, I can handle that. But God's always going to put you under somebody else's authority and I can just simply say that you have no business being in authority if you don't know how to come under authority. Amen. So they just didn't like the fact that Moses was the boss. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And I like this part, and the Lord heard it. <laughs> I just did a teaching to our staff 
last week, a chapel, and I called it, God is watching you. <laughs> you know, the, the everywhereness of God. He knows everything, hears everything, sees everything. And so here they are talking against Moses because they're jealous and don't like the fact that he's in charge and God heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, gentle, kind, and humble above all the men on the face of the earth. And you'll find out later that he didn't just inherit that, it took 40 years in the wilderness to get that way. We're not just born with this kind of fruit. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness to get rid of his own rebellion. And suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out you three to the tent of meeting. <laughs> and the three of them came out. I guess when God tells you to come out, you come out, right? Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the tent door and he called Aaron and Miriam and they came forward and he said, hear now my words, if there is a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision and I speak to him in a dream. But not so with my servant Moses, he is entrusted and faithful, we're talking about faithfulness today, he is faithful in all of my house and with him I speak mouth to mouth directly. You want to hear from God better? You want to hear God's voice? You want to sense His presence? Then stop leaving places just because you're not comfortable when God's telling you to stay there. And stop staying just because you're comfortable if God's telling you it's time to go. God told Abraham that he had to get away from some stuff. His family were idol worshipers, and he said, leave your family and everything that you're comfortable with and go to the place that I will show you once you start going. Sometimes we go when we should stay, and sometimes we stay when, sh when we should go. So the point is, is to listen to God. If you run away from a hard place, you're only going to run back into it somewhere else. Amen? I see you guys up there. Even those of you that are hiding up there in those little boxes, I see you. And all of you watching by TV, I see you. At least in my spirit, I see you. Think about it. If you run away from hard places, probably most everybody in here today is in a hard place. If you run away from the hard place that you're facing right now, and it's so easy when you're uncomfortable to blame, 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 blame. It's everybody else but me. They don't understand. Well, God understands. And maybe you can't make the people do anything, but God can make the people do something. <laughs> and we need to learn to keep our eyes on God. With him I speak mouth to mouth directly, clearly, not in dark speeches. And he beholds the farm of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Well, I guess I could stop right here and have another whole sermon about being careful about what you say about men and women that God are that God's using. Why were you not afraid, he said, to speak against my servant Moses? You know why we're not afraid? Because of pride and haughtiness and thinking that we know more than anybody else on the planet. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I mean, God has to remind, remind me all the time, Joyce, it's just absolutely none of your business. I've already heard that this morning before I got to the meeting. <laughs> Joyce, it's just absolutely none of your business. And I, I take that from God. It's like, yeah, I need to be reminded. Just stay out of that. Do you know you don't need to have an opinion where you don't have responsibility? Come on, that's better than your acting. You don't really need to have an opinion where you have no responsibility. But here, Miriam and Aaron, they've got an opinion, and of all things, about the color of his wife. And like I said, they couldn't have cared less. They just didn't like it because somebody was in charge and it wasn't them. Now, I know none of you are like that. 
I'm probably, I'm sure you're sitting there now just thinking of all the rebellious people that you wish were here today. <laughs> to hear this message and you know that they've missed it. And you've already planned to buy them the CD. <laughs> well, before you do, maybe you better take another listen before you pass it on. <laughs> to somebody else. Moses was faithful in all of my house. I love that. Verse 9, the anger of the Lord was kindled against him, and he departed. When the cloud departed from over the tent, behold, Miriam suddenly had leprosy. <laughs> Woo! And Aaron looked at Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, I plead with you, lay not this sin upon us, which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. You notice, now they're naming it right. They're calling talking against Moses and judging him sin. <laughs> Let's don't let that gossip thing become another one of these respectable sins. I mean, things that we just kind of think it's okay to do in the church and it's not one of the biggies. It obviously was a pretty big thing to God. Well, I'm just speaking out what's right. Well, you know, there's a time to come against people if they are doing something that's wrong but it has to be done decently and in order and there's a proper way to do it and it's not to sit in little groups and gossip with your friends. That never solves anything. All it does is bring destruction. On your job, in your church, come on, don't even do it on your job. Don't do that. Don't sit around in little groups at lunch and talk about everything that's wrong with the company and everything that's wrong with the boss and everything you think you should have that you're not getting. Why don't you start by thanking God you've got a job? Because there's somebody that would like to have yours if you don't want it. Amen? And if you're thankful and you're faithful to God and you're even a good faithful employee there and you do your work and you do it with excellence, and you even go the extra mile, God will promote you. He'll either promote you within that company and make you the boss, or he will put you somewhere else where you can be treated the way you're supposed to be treated. Well, here's the thing that I find interesting. Instead of Moses saying, yeah, you deserve that leprosy. Just go ahead and suffer. He immediately started to pray for her that God would heal her. You know what we're seeing here? Character. We're seeing character. Are you praying for your enemies? Wow, it's really quiet in here. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Are you praying for your enemies? Are you blessing those who have hurt you? and abused you, or you talk, 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 talk. I feel a little feisty today. You're just going to have to forgive me. <laughs> Moses was faithful. Jesus was faithful. Esther, Ruth, David, Joseph, Abraham. You know, all the men and women that we admire in the Bible, all these great men and women, all these heroes of faith, these were the people that were faithful. There's other people that you see on one page, and then they disappear. I wonder about those guys that didn't make it. And you know, it's not too hard to figure out. If you go back, they were either disobedient, disobedient, or they had an attitude, or there's some reason why they didn't stick in the pages. Amen? I'd still like people to be saying nice things about me a hundred years after I'm gone. Well, God has a really good plan for our lives, but you know, it's only through our faithfulness, which is doing what's right over and over and over again, no matter how we feel, that we're finally able to live in the fullness of the plan that God has for us. You know, faithfulness is so important. The Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. So even when you just see a little bit of what your whole dream is, that's enough to keep you encouraged to keep pressing on and being faithful to God. I honestly don't think that we hear enough about faithfulness today. 
And a faithful person is someone who just keeps doing what they know they're supposed to do, no matter what the results are. I always say that we can outlast the devil. We can outlast our enemy by just continuing to do what we know that we should do. And then eventually, I believe that he will give up and go aggravate somebody else that he can control.